A common automation is creating a malware by using an email app and data from a spreadsheet. I'm Chanel Greco from Superis, and in this video, I'll show you how to create a mail merge by using Gmail and Google Sheets. So the scenario of this video tutorial is that I'm a manager and I'm very happy with my employees and I would like to give them a bonus and I want to automate the sending out of this email. Now in this video tutorial, I'm going to be sending out the email to two people, but imagine you're a manager of, I don't know, 15 maybe of a team of 15 and you want to send them out a personalized email with the amount of the bonus that they're going to receive. Now you wouldn't want to do this manually, but instead you bulk send out an email Email, you automate this task and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We are basing this mail merge on an awesome automation script um, that has been provided by Martin Hoxie. He's an G Suite developer and Google developer expert. And this um, tutorial that we're working through is actually to be found on Google Solution Gallery. That is an awesome place to go and check for resources, um, especially if you're getting started with automating um, these Google applications, or if you want to maybe get a new idea on an automation script that you're working on, to go ahead and look at it. So what I did is I downloaded a copy of this document that they're providing and this is what you see here in Google Sheets. This is the standard document, the way that they have created it. And to have a look at the code, head over to Tools and then to Script Editor. And I have this prepared like so, so we can put it in a nice side to side. Let me dismiss this. So obviously there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of code here. I definitely won't be getting into details, but I do want to show you two, three things that um, you have to take into account when you want to use this script and maybe want to adapt it to your needs. So the first thing being is that here we have on um, code on lines number 23 and 24, we have our constants so these are special types of variables, immutable variables, that um, each have the value of the first recipient and the second email sent. And these two um, constants, these two uh, values are to be found over here in our sheet. So this is C recipient. And if we scroll, scroll back here to column number, uh, to column G, you'll find email sent. So that means if you, in your case, you want to go ahead and, I don't know, instead of calling this recipient, you want to call this employee, which you absolutely can, make sure to go ahead and, let me just copy this, make sure to use the exact same wording, the exact same name that you gave this column over here, also in your script, because otherwise this won't work because what the script does is it goes and searches for a cell that has the value of, a value of employee. So that's why this has to match. So that's the first thing I want to um, to, uh, to to make share uh, to to share with you, or that you make sure of of um, adhering to this. Here we have our function on open. What this does is that it creates every time you open the spreadsheet, it creates a new menu item. So first a menu, and then an, it adds the item, and that's what we see here. This mail merge sent emails. Well, that's exactly what has been added here. So if you want to name it differently, then you um, are absolutely free to do so. Here we see sent emails, and this is probably what you could say the heart and soul of this whole uh, of this whole automation script so here's where all the magic happens where um, our script um, knows and where it's defined what for columns it has to read what for informations it has to get that it has to for example extract the email address and then afterwards paste this in our email draft that we have sitting waiting in our gmail account um, to receive the data from this automation script and then automatically send out these emails 
Um, yeah, so that's that. I won't, as I said, I won't go too much into detail. There is in the solution gallery from Google, which I just showed you before and where you got this copy from, there is some information on how you can use this. So this is just comment that the only th last thing I want to show you here is that you can, um, take this comment away and then for instance you could send this email out with a blind copy or you could change um, let me just comment that out again you could change the from address from for the the email that displays uh, that's being displayed in the email that gets sent out so let me make sure to save this okay Good. So how do we actually, or no, maybe let's, let's go ahead. Um, I would like to, to change these columns. So this isn't what I need for my scenario for the, the, the tasks that I want to fulfill. Instead, I need here employee, then, uh, I don't need description. I don't need that. So I just delete whatever I don't need. I, the only thing I actually want, you know what, let me delete this too. I just want to keep bonus. So I over here have something prepared that I'm just going to copy paste. There you go. Very good. So this um, is to simulate in our scenario. These are our employees. These are the email addresses. And this is the bonus that I want to pay them. And I want to inform them of this bonus and also thank them for their good work by sending them this email, which I have prepared. So this is all I had to do since I changed the column naming here. I had to change it as well here on line number 23. So if you call this, I don't know if you're sending out something to your students, if you're a teacher and you call it here student, well then make sure to call it here student. So that has to be the exact same wording, the same thing for email sent. The rest, the rest is really up to you. Good. I'm here in my Gmail account and I have a draft prepared where I uh, here, I'm, I want the name, so this is the personalization, I want the name of my employee to be displayed here, and I want the amount of the bonus to, to show up here once I send this email at, out. So that's what I want to do. And in order for this to work, so make sure to add this with the curly brackets, that's crucial. Otherwise, um, uh, our, our automation script won't work because what it's looking for is whatever is within curly brackets. And if this, like here, first name corresponds to, where is it, to this over here, first name, well then it's going to um, take whatever value is here in this columns beneath first name and put it here as the value and send it out in this email. So that's why it's really important to have the same name there and make sure not to have any spaces in between first uh, and name. By the way, I have an online course about how you can automate workflows and process in Google Sheets, which then allows you to save time and concentrate on more important things. Head over to courses.saparis.io and check it out. Let's go ahead and actually run this script now. So we'll click on mail merge, send emails. And now it's asking me to add or to specify the subject line of our email draft that is waiting on this script to reference. So I'm going to copy this and go back over here, paste it, okay. And now it's running, it finished the script. Let me go ahead and, where is it? I have a Jane examples, there you go. I have a Jane examples Gmail account. So this is the email she received and oops, something went wrong. So here the personalization worked. Here I'm missing the name. This on the other hand did work again. Mm, what what what's the mistake? Okay, so I did this on purposely just to to demonstrate how important the following thing is. You see how I have first name here and first name here. You see that there's a space in front of the first name in the second instance. So that's the reason why th this did not work because there is not allowed to be a space in between the curly bracket and the first letter of our variable name. So 
When it comes to writing automation scripts, something you'll have to, to learn is that you have to be precise. Um, the automation script, it cannot deal with you having an extra space when it's not expecting that space to be there. So how do we run the script again? Let's say this was maybe a test or something went wrong and we want to run the script again. How do we do so? Well, let's go back to our code. Let me just fire it up here. And Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, here, this is what I wanted to show you. So this has been marked as sent. In order for the script to run again, to actually send out the emails again, I have to first delete this. Otherwise, it, it it's checking. And that's why this email is sent. That column is there. Because what the script is doing is checking, is the email sent column, is there a date in there or is it empty? If it's empty, then I'll send out the emails. If it's filled with a date, then it won't send out the email. So also if you're running a test, sending this to yourself, and then afterwards wanting to send it to um, the actual recipients, we'll make sure to delete whatever's in email sent. Okay, so let's send this out again. And it's again going to ask me for this here. Let me do like so. Okay. Okay, so now it tells me, yes, I've sent the email out. Let me go and check Jane Examples account. There you go. Our personalization has worked exactly the way we expected it to. Check out my other videos on automation with Google Apps Script. I have a whole playlist full of them. And if you have any questions to them, leave me a comment below. And would you mind subscribing to this YouTube channel? Because I would not want you to miss out on any of my video tutorials about Google Apps Script.